It's been a couple months since we built a PC here on Short Circuit, so when Asus and Intel reached out about sponsoring a video showing off Asus's new line of tough gaming products along with Intel processors, we thought what better way to fix that than by building a PC with it. We've got a full setup of gear here, there's some over here, there's some over here, there's some behind the camera that we're gonna get in here shortly, and yeah, we're gonna build a PC. And it's all gonna start with a motherboard as usual. Of course, the most beautiful motherboard box we have here. I'm sorry, Asus, love you guys, but I'm gonna call you out for, for giving us a plain box for a sponsored motherboard <laughs> and part unboxing. This is kind of weird, but I assure you what's inside is much cooler than the box. Specifically, this motherboard is the Tough Gaming Z790 Plus Wi-Fi D4. The D4 meaning that this board uses DDR4, which is a great way to keep the cost down on a new build like this. And it kind of goes hand in hand with the tier of parts. So Tough for Asus is kind of like their more mainstream affordable line. Um, there's of course ROG, which is usually a, a good bit more expensive, but these are kind of designed to give you all of the performance, all of the functionality you need without being too crazy, too expensive, too many like fancy knickknacks you don't really need. I mean, there's a good bit of USB here. We've got 20 gig, we got 10 gig type C, 2.5 gig LAN, which is great. Wi-Fi 6 on an ROG board, you might see Wi-Fi 6E. Um, but Wi-Fi 6 is still super fast. There is also display outputs in case you're building a system and just using the integrated GPU. Um, other than that, the I.O., that's pretty much it. On the board itself, oh wow, this board's got PCIe Gen 5, damn boy. We've got a Gen 5 by 16 slot at the top for a GPU. We've got a one by slot here, another one by, another four, and then this one looks like it's a 16, but is actually electrically a four. There's no CMOS battery in this motherboard. We found the only CMOS battery in the bin is Sunbeam brand, and I don't know how old it is or if it works, so hopefully it does. If it doesn't post, that's gonna be the first place I look. <laughs> What else we got on here? Uh, there's USB 3.2 front panel header, which is a nice inclusion. Man, back in the day, a couple years ago, you would have to buy a five, six, seven hundred dollar motherboard to get that, and this is not gonna be anywhere near that in terms of price, which is great. What else we got? M.2s. How many M.2s? Is there three M.2s on this board? We? Yeah, wow, three M.2s, look at that. What? Holy balls, there's four M.2 slots on this board. Yeah, on top of there being a lot of M.2 slots, I mean, look at this, they all have the easy latch. Everybody hates M.2 screws. It's like a universal thing. This one doesn't have any. Very good. <laughs> it also just looks nice. I mean, this is, it's a $275 board right now. I mean, you could you could tell me this is like a three, $400 motherboard and I'd believe you. One thing I forgot to mention about that Gen 5 slot, look, button release, thank you. Also, it's got the metal reinforcement, which I think they call safe slot. Yeah, they call it safe slot. It's just kind of a reinforcement, especially if you look at how big graphics cards are getting. Have you seen those 4090s? They're like this big. You don't want that just resting on a plastic slot. This is gonna be a lot stronger. I guess let's put a CPU in it. Of course, this is LGA 1700 Z790 Intel, which means you're gonna be using a 13th gen chip like this 13600K. Try to make this build a little more normal, a little more mainstream. The 13600K is a very capable chip, even despite it being a bit mainstream. Like I mentioned before, this is a D4 board, so we're gonna be using DDR4. This is some 3200 mega transfer per second CL16 DDR4, 16 gig sticks. Maybe not the fastest RAM you could put in this board by any stretch of the imagination, but should be fine. What else we got here? Fans, wow, tough gaming fans. Three pack, okay. Did you know you can get this at lttstore.com? It's the Jerry Rig Everything Knife. Okay, got some cables. What is this? Oh, it's like a little controller. All right, the hub supports up to four fans to control your RGB. You can use this little three pin guy with a little included adapter to plug it into your motherboard's addressable RGB control, which you're gonna wanna do. I think this is mostly just here, A, as a splitter, so you can plug three of them in, and B, if your motherboard doesn't have an addressable RGB header, you can get some actual like manual control here. Oh, they also include a fan splitter, nice. So for the fan power itself, you just have to plug you know, one guy in there, and boom, you can plug your three fans into that. Nice touch, because wiring three individual fans, kind of annoying. Hey, look at that, we got a graphics card, RTX 4070 Ti, tough gaming, 12 gigabytes RAM, Aorus, Sync, of course, this is the OC edition. This is a much nicer box than the motherboard Asus. This particular card, the OC edition, is around 850 bucks, but the non-OC version of this is 799.99. On the back, we've got 
three DisplayPort and two HDMI, that's a good loadout. A lot of cards nowadays are just like 2DP, two HDMI, or 3DP, one HDMI. This one has at least two of each. In terms of power, this card's using the new 12-pin connector. I don't know if our power supply has it, but they include an adapter. So you can run two standard PCIe 8 pins into the fancy 12 pin. Um, when you're plugging this in, make sure that it is plugged all the way in. In terms of the cooler, it's a triple fan design. It's a big cooler. I mean, just look, the card PCB ends here and the, the cooler actually goes all the way over here. So you're gonna get some flow through these slots here. It's a little bit bigger than a three slot design, just ever so slightly, like this is three slots and this juts out a little bit. It uses military grade capacitors that are rated for 20,000 hours at 105 degrees Celsius. I imagine they'll probably run a lot colder than that, so you should get more than 20,000 hours. Um, but other than that, just it's a, it's a 4070 Ti. It's gonna be a very, very fast graphics card. What's left? Oh, right. I need something to build the computer in. Oh my God. What is this? The GT502 Tough Gaming Case. Oh, look at that. It's got handles. Oh, whoa, this is larger than I expected. But look, it's got handles. So I'm just like, you know, it's fine. It's it's not that heavy actually. This is, they're very nice handles. Like look at yeah. some padding in there. Like, God damn brother. What is this? Oh, oh, look at that. Quick release side panels. Whoa, look, there's some peels in. Oh, these are fan filters, nice. Okay, I'm not gonna peel those then. I'm just gonna leave them on there. That's a little hack for you. They're magnetic, but also you could just leave this tape here and then you don't have to worry about the magnet coming off. Just leave it. What else we got here? Okay, so this is a dual chamber design. Back here, you're gonna have power supply down here. Uh, you can put fans up here, there's some SSD mounts. Hard drive mount, but it's kind of a, like a second chamber back here, so everything's separate. Apparently these straps ugh, can hold up to 30 kilograms, which is like over 60 pounds. I bet you these could hold more than that. I feel like one of these could support 60 pounds, but either way, that's plenty of enough to support an entire system. So if you were gonna take this thing to a LAN party, just, just pick it up, take it for a walk. I got some clarification on the dual zone. You could put a second radiator back here that was specifically for cooling your GPU. That's why they say you could have dual zone heating and cooling. But if you're using an air-cooled GPU like we are, obviously the GPU is gonna go in the front here. So it's only one zone for that. This is a nice looking case. I have no idea what case they got inspiration from when building this one. I like the quick release side panels, big tempered glass panel, which is nice. I'm a big fan of cases with glass in the front just because of the amount of access you get. It does hinder your cooling in some ways because you don't have fans up here, but this case has a little trick up its sleeve. You see these SSD mounts here? Bam, look at that. You can put fans there or an AIO or like a distribution plate for a water cooling setup. Very versatile. How many fans can you put in this thing? You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 fans. Holy shit. That's a lot of fans. This is not a tough power supply. Do they make tough power supplies? Do we know? This is also kind of a weird power supply for this build. It's SFXL, which is unnecessary and more expensive than a regular ATX power supply, which this case does support. However, it's what I had over here already and most SFX power supplies come with a little adapter. So you can put them in an ATX case, just like that. You see, it's like, now it's, it's big size. Say if you were planning or thinking down the road, hey, I might do a small form factor build someday. Well, you could buy an SFX power supply, use the included adapter, and then uh, you don't have to worry about buying a new power supply down the road. A lot of the time, I make this mistake. I'm like, I'm gonna put my computer together, put my computer together, throw the motherboard in there, let's do it. Motherboard's in, you put your AIO in, and then you're like, crap, I didn't run the cables. How am I gonna, <laughs> I gotta fish these stupid EPS cables through these little little, little doodads here, but there's, there's a lot of space. Even if you put an AIO here, it would be a little tight, but um, if you don't have an AIO here, cause you can put the AIO on the side with this case, you got all this access. You can cram cables through there all you want. No problemo. Wow, that is a hell of a <laughs> What is this thing? This is a Ryujin 2 240. It's got the mother of all pumps here, <laughs> Jesus. I think most of it is this, oh yeah, wow. Whoa, it just comes off, what the hell? Yeah, okay, that's just basically all screen. All right, GPU goes in. We're getting there. Okay, that's a computer, right? Looks like a computer. I've never built one before, so this is this is all news to me. 
Whoa, look at that. What is this? The Tough Gaming VG78U. 4K, 144Hz, HDR, FreeSync Premium, 90% DCI, P3 color gamut. We got HDMI 2.1, G-Sync, one millisecond response time. Wow, this thing has a lot of ports. Holy crap. Let me spin it around. There is four HDMI inputs, display port, audio, and a USB hub. Two of them are HDMI 2.1 too, so you could have your computer plugged in over HDMI 2.1 and a console. It's like actually kind of dope. Hey, it lights up. That's a good sign. All right, we've got GPU Tweak 3 open here. They revamped the user interface so it looks a lot nicer. They also overhauled the frequency and voltage settings, and they also added automatic profile switching. I'm just gonna like, yeah, screw it. Let's just set our power target a little higher. Yeah. Oh man, we're playing at 4K, ultra nightmare settings, ray tracing on, and we're still over 100 FPS. This game runs so good and looks so good that it makes other games just kind of a joke. Like, how can they achieve these graphics and this performance? <laughs> and other games are not anywhere close. I mean, there are, there are games that run good, but this one runs really good. Let's check our temperatures. We got our CPU package temperature, let's see, 57 degrees. We're drawing you know, 70 watts. You're not gonna be pushing your CPU too bad when you're gaming usually. Uh, what do we got for graphics card? 64 degrees, 225 watts of power. 230 watts of power. It performs good, it's quiet, it's cool. And best of all, you can check out the ASUS Tough lineup at the link down in the description. They also have a giveaway running for some of their Tough products. So you definitely check that out as well. If you like this video, like it, comment what you wanna see next, and, and subscribe, and bye. Oh God, ah!